we will now talk about the midbrain that is the second part of brain which is also known as mesencephalon midbrain or mesencephalon we have uh, already drawn that structure here and it is obvious that it is completely covered by the forebrain and this mesencephalon has two parts optic lobes and cerebral peduncles so a pair of optic lobes actually a pair but then there are four lobes there are two large lobes and each lobe is further divided by a transverse fissure so this is one lobe large lobe and there is a transverse fissure depression and these two lobes are connected to each other by a transverse connection so what is visible to us are superior two structures and inferior two structures these are the four lobes which are visible actually there are two main and these two lobes have undergone transverse fission and that is why we see four lobes and this is known as optic quadrigemina quadrigemina because of these four lobes which are visible and again this is a characteristic feature of mammals characters of or characteristic feature of mammals so there are two important characteristic features that we have talked of found in mammals and that are in the nervous system that is the brain related part one is this corpus callosum which connects the cerebral hemispheres and the second is this optic quadrigemina so there are four lobes and these upper ones are bigger and they are known as superior colliculi and the lower ones are the inferior ones and as the name tells us optic their main role is in vision so help in vision that is optic lobes helping in vision cerebral peduncles these are long sturdy very rigid longitudinal nerve fibers longitudinal nerve fibers or nerve uh, bands actually nerve bands so these are long strands or long bands which are made up of longitudinal nerve fibers and their function is coordination between the forebrain and the hind brain between fore and hind brain now the reason why this diagram i have kept here is we are talking of one more system which is found in the brain it is not a separate thing it is uh, it includes basically a part of uh, forebrain basically and some certain additional structure this is known as limbic system and we want to draw that limbic system here and that is why i have kept that diagram limbic system is associated with our emotions behavior uh, converting short term memory into long term memory and there are many things which are associated with it there are two main parts one which and these are paired structures so i'm going to draw it here just beneath the hypothalamus and we are talking of let me raise this here so that we can write this limbic system in this part limbic system very important part of our brain and it is made up of two regions one small uh, uh, circular uh, almond shaped structures which are beneath the thalamus region so this is one part and these are paired structures so beneath each thalamus there would be one 
This structure is known as amygdala. So this dark structure which we have drawn is actually amygdala. And from amygdala would arise another structure which is thick and it goes on the inner side of this corpus callosa. So this is the structure which is going like this. And if we try to draw it separately, this is one amygdala which is, this is the other one. From here arises one structure and from here arises the other structure. So it is actually a fork like uh, structure which is going from bottom of the thalamus to the back side. So this is one. And this structure which is extended is known as hippocampus. So there are two main parts. But there are other structures of forebrain which are associated with it. Diencephalon because it is just beneath thalamus. Hypothalamus is also associated with it. Even memory, uh, sorry, mammillary bodies. So there are many other things which are associated with it. But there are two main parts. Amygdala and this hippocampus. And hippocampus. The function of hippocampus alone is basically to convert short term memory into long term. Short term to long term memory. So whatever we remember now as a short term memory, if it is stored in our uh, brain, it is converted into long term memory. We will be able to recall, recollect those uh, information or those points. Amygdala is responsible for emotions and all those emotions are like anger, fear, even the sexual behavior it has been experimentally seen in animals that if this amygdala is removed then these animals are tamed very easily. Normally, under certain situations, they would uh, get hyper, they would start behaving in a random manner. This is like a defense mechanism, uh, aggression which they show. But if amygdala is removed, their behavior to all these situations is absolutely zero. They are very calm. So to tame these animals, they experimented with this. So amygdala, when it was removed, those animals, their behavior, aggression was totally gone. So amygdala mainly responsible for emotions and hippocampus is mainly, mainly for converting the short term memory into long term. So this is limbic system and we have written only two main parts that is amygdala and hippocampus. But as I said, the other parts are also associated with it. Like diencephalon is also associated with it because thalamus, hypothalamus, even mammillary bodies are very close to this. And limbic system is not a separate system. It is having two structures and other things of the forebrain itself. So now we are done with the forebrain, midbrain and limbic system also. Now in the next part, we'll take up the hind brain and we'll see all three parts of hind brain and their individual functions.